This weekend, I'm taking you to the finest city in California, San Diego. This city is full of life and sunshine, leaving visitors with endless opportunities for experiences in this city by the sea. If good food, boating, and saving money fit your itinerary, you won't want to miss this weekend getaway to the southwest corner of the U.S. Hi, I'm Michael. Join me as I share some ideas for things to do in San Diego without breaking the bank. Make sure to subscribe to this channel and leave a like. San Diego is conveniently located only a few hours from Los Angeles and Orange County by car and train and is connected to most major U.S. cities from its airport. We're staying in an Airbnb in the University Heights neighborhood, located north from downtown near the well-known Hillcrest Nightlife. This weekend, I want to show you what you can expect for some of San Diego's most popular low-cost weekend activities. After a nice brunch at Breakfast and Bubbles, we're heading to the water for our first activity. Coronado Island has long been an exclusive address in San Diego. For many years, the island was accessible only by ferry, which is how we'll be reaching the island today. The Coronado Island Ferry is operated by Flagship SD and runs between the Broadway piers to the Coronado Ferry landing docks. The voyage takes approximately 15 minutes to cross the bay, passing pleasure craft and U.S. Navy vessels. One of my favorite parts of the journey is the perspective of the skyline from the water. The San Diego skyline is continuously evolving with the construction of high-rise condominium towers and hotels. The ferry runs hourly every day, with departures from downtown on the hour and departures from Coronado on the half hour. Tickets are $7 per person for this unique experience out on San Diego Bay. Once you reach Coronado, you can explore the ferry landing area or trek across the island to the Hotel del Coronado and the oceanfront. Next to the ferry landing is one of the most iconic views of the San Diego skyline. If you don't want to take the ferry and drive your own car, you can cross the bridge for free. Traffic and parking are a bit of a challenge on the island, which is something to consider when planning your visit. Want to do an urban hike? San Diego's topography shapes its neighborhoods. Just north of downtown is an officially unofficial urban hike called the Seven Bridges Walk. Starting in Hillcrest and looping around through Balboa Park and Bankers Hill, the five and a half mile hike takes you across seven unique bridges. Some are pedestrian only while others carry cars as well. We're taking a counterclockwise trip around the loop, starting at the Georgia Street Bridge in Hillcrest. The bridge crosses University Avenue, connecting the North Park and Hillcrest neighborhoods. Next is the Vermont Street Bridge, the newest of the seven bridges, which crosses Washington Street in Hillcrest. The next bridge is one of my favorites, the Spruce Street Suspension Bridge. The pedestrian-only bridge bounces and sways as you cross and snap selfies for Instagram. Around the corner is the Quincy Street Bridge, another pedestrian-only bridge. This wooden trestle dates back to the early 1900s when it was built as an access route to the former street trolley line on 4th Avenue. The next bridge is a steel arch structure the First Avenue Bridge. 
This structure dates back to the 1930s and is the only steel arch bridge in the city. There are some great views of the San Diego Bay and Point Loma in the distance. The last two bridges are within the confines of Balboa Park, the Cabrillo Bridge and Park Boulevard Bridge. The Grand Cabrillo Bridge crosses the 163 freeway, leading right into the heart of Balboa Park and the Prado. On the east side of the park is the Park Boulevard Bridge, which connects the central Prado Plaza to the Rose Gardens. The hike took about three hours walking at a relaxed pace. Make sure to wear comfortable walking shoes and bring water. There are plenty of restaurants and coffee houses along the way to take a break if you need it. The best part about this whole experience is it's free. Whether you're doing the Seven Bridges walk or just looking to spend some time outside, don't miss Balboa Park. The park is like San Diego's backyard with more than 1,200 acres of open space. There's some amazing architecture in the park around the Prado, dating back to the Panama, California Exposition in the early 1900s. The Botanical Building, which is currently undergoing renovations, anchors the gardens along the Prado. Museums and theaters provide a break from the sun. Check out the San Diego Model Railroad Museum or the Japanese Tea Garden when you visit. Check their websites for hours and admission fees. There's several short hiking trails that pass through the tree cover. The park is also adjacent to the famed San Diego Zoo. One of my favorite things to do in San Diego is just be near the water, and thankfully, there's so many ways to do that. We saw on the San Diego Bucket Listers Instagram page an ad for dog-friendly paddle boating on San Diego Bay. Located just south of Liberty Station on the Point Loma side of the bay, you can rent paddle boats by the hour. The water is fairly calm within the marina. If you rent for one hour, the Eco Pedal Company recommends a leisurely route around the marina. Longer rentals give enough time to paddle out into the bay. There are lots of pretty boats in the marina to paddle by, and you may even see some wildlife in the water like we did. This was a good workout for an hour, made more special to share with my dog. For two people for one hour, the rental cost is $50, making it the most expensive activity on this list. In the area is the Liberty Public Market at the decommissioned Liberty Station. The market has a number of food stalls serving up sandwiches, desserts, and local microbrews. There are also a number of sit-down restaurants in the Old Liberty Station area, like Solaire. Closer to downtown, you can spend some time along the waterfront at Seaport Village, a waterfront center for restaurants and small shops. For one of the most unique experiences in Southern California, head up the road to La Jolla. The La Jolla Cove area is a stunning stretch of coastline with beautifully colored water and jagged cliffs. But the natural beauty isn't the only attraction. Each year, the beaches of La Jolla Cove become the mating grounds for dozens of seals and sea lions. 
Their loud barks can be heard from all around, drawing the attention of photographers, locals, and tourists. It blows my mind being so close to nature and the beauty of these animals in such short distance from the big city. Seeing the animals and wandering along the coastal park is free. San Diego is a great food city. Many restaurants craft great food and cocktails to end your day. On this weekend, we experienced Madison in University Heights and Lacond in the Gas Lamp. No matter the season, don't miss out ending your day with the postcard California sunset. On Point Loma is a not so secret spot to watch the sunset over the ocean, the Sunset Cliffs. The sight of the nightly sunset brings an air of serenity and peace. People come here to meditate or snap pictures and video of an unforgettable sunset. We saw a wedding taking place and plenty of picnickers. Get there probably 15 to 30 minutes before sunset as traffic and parking can be a challenge. There are some rugged paths that lead down the cliff to the beach, which can be tricky to navigate back up in the twilight after sunset. San Diego is a destination I come back to again and again, and each time have a truly unique trip. I've only shown you a few low cost ways to spend a weekend in San Diego. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and check back for future videos showing more tips of how to experience San Diego and the rest of Southern California. Have a suggestion? Leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.